Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. Uh, let us uh, resume our discussion of Mahesh Dattani's plays. In the last session, we looked at uh, one of his plays called Final Solutions, where uh, the play is really about uh, the main characters Ramnik and his daughter Smita, who uh, come from a liberal uh, Hindu family. And they have to negotiate with two extreme ends of religious orthodoxy. So on one hand, you have Ramnik's wife Aruna, who is a very orthodox a Hindu who observes rites of purity and pollution and is unwilling to uh, give water or feed um, uh, the Javed and Bobby who are visiting, who are actually escaping from a bloodthirsty mob that wants to kill them, uh, that accuses them of conspiring against Hindus. So she is unwilling to actually give them anything because she, uh, she does not uh, like to feed or uh, you know, share her domestic space with people who belong to different castes and other religions. And on the other hand, you have someone like Javed, who is this young, uh, idealistic, uh, rebellious Muslim uh, man, the brother of Smita's classmate Tasneem, who uh, wants to, uh, who actually finally confesses towards the end of the play that he was the one who actually triggered the riots between the Hindus and the Muslims. And so he uh, takes responsibility for it and he said that he's the one who is the one who actually triggers the riots between the Hindus and the Muslims. And uh, they were actually not, they were lying about being, uh, you know, uh, chased by a Hindu mob when uh, Javed tells Ramnik that I am the mob. You can't separate me from the mob. There's no difference between me and them. I, uh, I, what I do uh, and what they do is the same thing. We both create uh, violence and unrest between Hindus and Muslims. It's just that I do it in a different street and they do it in a different street, right? So he confesses that he is the, and he even identifies, Javad even identifies with Aruna, saying that they are both two ends of the same spectrum of, uh, of communalism and fundamentalism. And uh, you also have uh, another intersecting narrative in uh, Final Solutions, which is the uh, story of Hardika, the grandmother, uh, who, uh, uh, and there are constant flashbacks in the play which suggest her uh, memories of partition, of how for the longest time she thought that the Muslims were actually responsible for killing her father during partition. Uh, it also describes her friendship with uh, Zareen, a Muslim woman uh, whose, fa whose father owns a fabric store. And the fabric store ends up getting burnt by, uh, you know, uh, Hardika's own uh, in-laws. Right? So Hardika and Daksha are two uh, uh, interchangeable characters. Daksha playing the young, uh, the, uh, the youthful version of Hardika. Right? And so they realize that um, she finally discovers that, uh, that it was uh, her in-laws who actually burnt Zareen's father's shop and uh, bought the shop from him at half the price. So uh, she discovers later on that uh, her family had refused to give uh, Zareen's father a job or uh, give him a loan to uh, restart his business. Right? So, and you also see another transformative moment towards the end of Final Solutions where Bobby, the, uh, Javed's um, brother-in-law-to-be, uh, the man who is uh, engaged to be, to, to be married to Tasneem, uh, he's the one who actually uh, holds the idol of Krishna towards the end of the play in his hand to test Aruna's faith. So the entire play really is about the negotiation of Hindu liberalism with, uh, with uh, conservatism, orthodoxy, fundamentalism, and, uh, and it, it really is testing the limits of what it means to be a liberal Hindu, right? Uh, and so the play, in fact, is quite uh, relevant in the, considering that it was performed in 89 and also before the whole Mandir, Mandal, uh, and uh, Masjid controversy. So it's an important comment on, uh, on the very fraught and complex relationship between liberalism on the one hand and on the other, uh, you know, uh, fundamentalism and communal uh, violence. So Aruna again is also 
uh, forced to transform, compelled to transform herself, she actually uh, re realizes that she has to practice greater tolerance. And she believes now, in, towards the end, she says that she believes in the plurality of faiths, uh, that there are many ways to God. And that, again, becomes a very liberal, liberal standpoint, right, from one who is uh, quite orthodox um, and puritanical. And uh, Smita, the daughter, also confesses how she was, she has been suffocated by her mother's piety, but that she tolerated her, despite the fact that her mother tried to superimpose her own Vaishnava faith in, in Lord Krishna onto uh, Smita. And Hartika also discovers towards the end that it was from her son, she discovers that it was actually her in-laws who created the violence. So every character in the novel the, uh, undergoes a certain transformation. Even Javed realizes towards the end that he hates his life that unlike Bobby, who never identified with being Muslim, he was also ashamed of, of, be, of belonging to his community for the violence that they had committed. But now Javed also confesses that he has led a meaningless life by creating uh, unnecessary violence uh, that has killed many innocent lives. So well, let's go on to the next play, which is uh, another very important play by uh, Datani called Bravely, uh, Bra Bravely Fought the Queen. Right. And of course, the, the title of the play itself is an allusion to Jhan Sikirani, uh, which uh, becomes an important allusion towards the uh, middle of the play as a symbol of uh, female uh, emancipation, female freedom of a certain kind. But although this freedom also is couched in extremely masculine um, uh, terms, right? So what it means to be a free woman is probably to take, uh, take uh, uh, you know, power into your hands and to be able to position yourself uh, as a very uh, a self-owning, independent, self-determining, uh, brave, manly woman, right? And so that becomes uh, one of the uh, motifs um, or symbols in the play. The uh, play itself is actually quite densely plotted because there are uh, quite a few characters and there are lots of secrets that are revealed by the end of the play, which reveals the uh, the uh, hypocrisy of uh, of of uh, institutions like the family. Right. So you have uh, certain norms that have to be obeyed and that have to be adhered to uh, when you belong to a family. But then that, by the end of it, becomes uh, you know, um, a sham. Right? It's exposed for uh, its hollowness by the end of the play. Uh, so it begins with um, a complete outsider to the family. So you have uh, two brothers, you have Jitain and Nitin, who, uh, who own uh, and live in uh, twin houses in uh, this very posh locality in Bangalore called Koramangla. The entire play is shot, in, is, is shot uh, set in Bangalore and uh, they, they both own twin houses in Koramangla uh, next to each other. Two brothers are married to two sisters, um, uh, Dolly and Alka. And Dolly and Alka have a brother called Praful who never actually appears on stage but is constantly being mentioned and then becomes the focal character of the play by the end. Uh, even though he never appears on stage. And uh, you have Ba, who is the old um, mother of Nitin Jitin, who lives uh, upstairs. Uh, and you, if you remember the uh, very complex and elaborate uh, stage settings that uh, Datani has, which, uh, which uh, suggests uh, you know, a layered stage that, is, that can be mapped onto the layers of the human uh, psyche. And it also, it also does a very interesting play with time and temporality. So just like the previous play where you have uh, two intersecting narratives, one of, of, Har of Hardika slash Daksha, and on the other hand you have the narrative of Ram the Ramniks and the encounter with Javed and Bobby intercutting on and intersecting each other. Similarly, you have another intersecting, uh, intercutting uh, a form in, in this play where you have uh, Ba who is uh, living upstairs in, one, in Dolly's house and she's always in bed and she probably has dementia because she's, she's uh, losing her memory. She only has memories of, um, uh, or probably she has Alzheimer's and she, she, has, uh, she only has memories of her son's youth, but she doesn't remember, uh, she doesn't always clearly remember what's happening in the present. So her uh, constant calls for help uh, or her constant calls to Dolly and Alka uh, interrupt the main uh, narrative of the play. And uh, you also have the main scene which is set in, the drawing, in Dolly's drawing room where uh, Dolly and Alka, um, Alka of course is in the neighboring house. And uh, they, you know, initially a lot of the what's happening in the play is not very clear. Uh, we, we only have uh, suggestions that of, of um, 
these uh, sisters being rather uh, lonely and isolated and uncomfortable in, in the family they married into. They don't seem to be entirely, uh, they don't seem to have a very harmonious and loving relationship to each other. Uh, we, uh, we sense that there are lots of animosities, hidden animosities and secrets that uh, will probably be revealed uh, across the course of the play. Uh, the initial act, uh, just to go over a uh, summary of the, of the plot, uh, you have um, an outsider called uh, Lalita who doesn't belong to the family and she is the wife of Sridhar who works for uh, Nitin and Jitin. And uh, Nitin and Jitin uh, run a uh, business which, uh, they not, 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 not a business but they actually run a, uh, an advertising firm which is um, on the threat of becoming uh, bankrupt. Right? So it's, it's, it's a fast failing business and they do, they're, trying, they're struggling, they're desperate to actually keep it afloat for which they need money. And uh, they need Sridhar also because uh, Sridhar is one of their uh, uh, assistants who needs to get uh, the, uh, this new account. Uh, he, uh, he called Revati, right? And Revati is a new range of uh, color coordinated nightwear and underwear for women. And Sridhar has been, uh, you know, uh, given the responsibility of um, finding uh, funders, uh, people who will, uh, clients, important clients who will uh, sponsor and uh, fund this campaign. And uh, his wife, uh, Lalita, has been asked to organize a masked ball with, uh, with Dolly and Alka. Uh, and uh, she wants uh, Dolly to suggest costumes for the actors since uh, the, uh, or the models who are going to be acting in the, uh, in the new ad campaign uh, since uh, Dolly seems to have some experience with uh, tailoring and stitching women's clothes. So there seems to be a misunderstanding at the, in the beginning of the play when Lolita meets them and Dolly uh, is not expecting her at all. She's not sure why she's here. And then there seems to be a mix-up in the dates, but then the mix-up also becomes a pretext for them to actually discover, for Lalita to discover a lot about the secrets, the hidden secrets and animosities and hostilities of the Trivedi family. So Dolly seems to be a fairly uh, very irritable and uh, guarded woman. She's uh, emotionally, emotionally distant. We don't know much about her and Lalita is trying to understand her but is not able to. Uh, it's interesting that, uh, that the scene begins with the dolly, uh, uh, you know, uh, wearing, um, uh, with the dolly's face completely covered by a face pack. Right? So she's wearing a face a facial mask uh, for, her, uh, for her skin and uh, she's not unable to talk very much or move very much uh, for fear of uh, uh, cracking, cracking the, uh, the, the makeup on the face. And so she's not able to, so she's, she's literally, she's wearing a mask. Right? So it's interesting that she's literally wearing some kind of a mask, a face pack in the, in the first act, uh, uh, suggesting as it were that she has uh, there are lots of secrets, hidden secrets, hidden desires, hidden animosities which cannot be revealed. Uh, the brothers, as I mentioned earlier, Nitin and, uh, and Jitin are living in large twin houses in Kormangla, which is a posh locality in Bangalore. And, um, there's the other character who does not appear on stage, which is Daksha. Daksha is Dolly and uh, Jitain's daughter. Uh, and uh, uh, Dolly seems to be someone who is uh, rather, you know, lonely and isolated. I mean, rather seems, seems to be a, quite a neglectful mother. She doesn't really know where, where uh, in which school, uh, which school Daksha goes to, right? She just vaguely knows that she goes to some school in Uti. But then where in Uti, she has no idea. And uh, Alka and her sister Dolly both seem to be lonely and isolated and trapped in the house looking after their poor mother-in-law who seems to have lost her memory. There's some, conf there's, some conf some, there's some confusion and miscommunication over the dates and Lalita, uh, you know, suddenly feels very uh, confused and flustered and feels rather unwanted in her house, especially because she's, she's come on the wrong date. So she feels like an unwanted guest. And she also senses the hidden animosities between Dolly and Alka. Dolly, uh, later on we discover over the course of the play, uh, over the conversations that Dolly and Alka have, that Dolly is, uh, is, seems to be a lot more uh, reticent, not a very friendly uh, woman, not very outgoing, unlike Alka who uh, seems to be a lot more social and uh, gregarious you know, in her um, behaviour. And uh, Dolly also seems to be jealous and resentful of Alka because Alka seems to be far better informed about their 
family plans. Right? She doesn't seem to know much. She also or she feels that Alka is the one who gets to know first about any plans, any any outings that uh, the family is going to go on. Uh, so Alka is married to her brother-in-law Nitin. Dolly also is another kind of person who seems to like talking to strangers uh, at large impersonal parties. Right? So she's uh, she's probably tired of. Um, uh, leading the kind of uh, the glamorous uh, and uh, wealthy life that her husband leads, uh, which entails uh, organizing and hosting large parties where one ends up uh, being trapped talking to strangers. So uh, she's probably a little, but she's also disappointed that she can't step out because now because the mix up of dates, since Lalita seems to have come on the wrong date and she had no idea of the masked ball, that she's now trapped at home and she's disappointed that, that the outing is not happening, right? So while she's dressing up and wearing her may makeup, eagerly looking forward to stepping out with her, her husband, her brother-in-law and her, and her sister, uh, they were supposed to go to meet the Kapoors, another important uh, client, but then the 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 party is uh, called off, right? And so she feels rather disappointed that she can't step out. So the sisters seem to be f quite. Uh, they seem to feel rather trapped in uh, that house, in that large mansion, looking taking care of their mother-in-law. Then uh, there are also certain other uh, snatches of conversation between. Um, uh, hints that are being thrown, uh, peppered throughout, uh, throughout the play uh, between Dolly and Alka and which reveals more and more about their uh, shared history. So we, we discover that Alka is an alcoholic who drinks a lot and was also once thrown out, thrown out of the house for insulting their mother-in-law until her brother Praful uh, convinces Nitin. So Praful and Nitin are college friends and so uh, Praful convinces Nitin to take his sister back. and. Um, Praful later also threatens uh, threatens uh, Alka if she is uh, seen drinking or if she is seen uh, having uh, even the slightest, remotest affair with any other man. Right. So the suspicion is that Alka is probably uh, you know tired of her marriage. Perhaps she is uh, having an affair with another man, although that's that's not entirely clear. But the fact that she's also drunk, she she has no control over her drinking, and that she once also insulted their mother, her mother-in-law. And the other inter interesting symbol that recurs throughout the novel, uh, throughout the play, is also uh, the, that of the bonsai. Right? So Lalita, uh, Sridhar's wife, who comes to meet uh, Dolly and Alka for the masked ball, uh, is known for her bonsais. So she makes bonsais. And bonsais, as we know, uh, have to be uh, stunted to grow to uh, its uh, limited size as a miniature tree. Right? So the roots have to be tied up. Uh, and they have to be given just about enough space that the bonsai does not actually grow up and grow into normal into its normal size. So the bonsai perhaps also becomes a symbol of uh, women's lives, especially women who have been who have suffered patriarchy, right? And that becomes clear because uh, uh, you know later on we we discover that Ba, the mother-in-law, uh, through her snatches of memories of her memories of uh, her youth, we discover that she was ill-treated and um, uh, beaten uh, beaten up by her husband, uh, and uh, so she seems to suffer the same uh, fate at the hands of her husband that uh, in some sense Dolly and Alka also later seem to be facing at the hands of their husbands and brother. So that common, uh, the common motif that links the two narratives of Ba's narrative of her youth, of her violent marriage uh, with, uh, with Dolly and Alka is one of patriarchal violence, right? domestic violence. There is another uh, character who is mentioned who never actually appears on stage which is Kanhaya. And Kanhaya is the young replacement of the temporary cook who works for Dolly. And uh, we later discover that Kanhaya does not exist. Right? So we think that he exists, that he is present somewhere, but that he actually ends up being just uh, an invention of uh, uh, Dolly's uh, imagination. Right? Uh, so he is just a fictional character who uh, symbolizes, who embodies Dolly's fantasy, erotic fantasy. So he's, uh, he, she imagines him as someone who is young and dark and attractive and desirable. And then uh, you also have um, Daksha, who is Dolly's sister, Dolly's daughter, who never actually appears on stage, but later we discover that she is training to be a Bharatanatyam dancer, but uh, that she's actually a woman who is a young woman who is disabled. Right? So she has uh, she has suffered certain disabilities. We discover later on why or how she exactly she she became disabled, um, but now she is uh, rather. Uh, incapacitated but is still trying. She, she studies in a special school for children with disabilities 
and then she is trained to be a, a Bharatanatyam dancer. In Act 2, uh, we again uh, are given uh, hints of uh, Nitin and Jitin's, uh, uh, you know, uh, advertising uh, firm which is suffering uh, due, to, due, to, due to lack of funds. Uh, Nitin and Jitin has, uh, they have been given an interest free loan from Praful right, for the advertising campaign and they decide to ask for 12 instead of the initial 10 lakhs so that they can use uh, uh, 10 lakhs for the ad advertising campaign and, uh, and, and uh, spend the remaining 2 lakhs uh, as interest so that can be circulated as interest. And they don't want Do Dolly and Alka to know that their brother Praful has given them money. Uh, they, uh, on the other hand, think, the brothers assume that Praful uh, uh, is, uh, is an inferior fool who actually loaned them money without any interest. Uh, so they are, they are actually quite shocked and amazed by and contemptuous of Praful for giving them a interest-free loan. And they just assume that he's doing it only because he wants them to remain married to his sisters. So Jitin and Nitin are struggling to keep the business afloat and their only hope is to get the Revati account for uh, uh, female uh, uh, nightwear and, and innerwear. And they're not very happy with the way Sridhar, their assistant, is handling the account. Uh, the client apparently does not like their idea, uh, which uh, they, uh, he, the client claims that uh, their advertising campaign for uh, this, uh, for women's underwear and innerwear, uh, it does not truly understand uh, what uh, women and what they want, right? So it's not uh, they 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 accuse him, they accuse them of um, of uh, being uh, of of obscenity. They they think that they they are actually that their advertising campaign is quite obscene and uh, uh, you know uh, sexualizes the woman who is dressed up in her uh, rather attractive and seductive lingerie, waiting for her husband to come back from work. Right, so they have a problem with uh, the, obs the open, explicit obscenity of the, of the advertising campaign. And then later on, uh, Jitain, who is the older of the, of the two brothers, Dolly's husband, uh, also, uh, you know, we discover that Jitain is a very violent man. Right? He is not someone who is, uh, listens to reason. He's someone who is always violent. Uh, he always erupts uh, into violence and rage. And... Um, he suggests that the campaign, that the advertising campaign should uh, target men instead of women. Because if you target men who have the buying power uh, to make their women look sexy, then that would actually be a far more successful campaign, right? Than targeting women who may not have the purchasing power. And, um, uh, you know, and so they're actually, after all, dressing up only to please their men. So the, the campaign, he believes, should actually target men who have the purchasing power to make the women look sexy. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, you also have undercutting, uh, intercutting memories uh, from Ba. Uh, so you have Ba's, Ba's memory of her son's childhood, and uh, which uh, suggests that their sons were, her sons were actually spoiled by their father. But uh, she also reveals that she gave them whatever money, she, little she had, she got from her father. Uh, for which she was beaten up by her husband. So, uh, you know, we realized that the husband, uh, Ba's husband was a violent man who probably did not give her much money, who just uh, used her as a, as a servant, as a slave. And uh, Ba's only choice was to ask her father for money to spend on her sons. Uh, Jitin uh, now wants to sell their ancestral home in Kormangla uh, to pay off their debts uh, in order to then get this Revati account. Uh, even though Nitin, on the other hand, is reluctant to give up the family home because of the memories, the childhood memories that are associated with the house. And uh, Jitain, of course, is very upset that uh, Sridhar uh, uh, agrees with the customer's feedback. When the customers say, probably when the customers are, of course, uh, women, and so when they feel that the campaign is rather obscene, uh, Sridhar agrees with them, but then Jitain doesn't. And so Jitain nearly fires Sridhar for disagreeing with him. There's also a past uh, incident of road rage which suggests that Jitin's driver had nearly killed an uh, auto rickshaw driver, right? So he had, uh, you know, Jitin's driver had, uh, had uh, driven the car across over the, or, over the auto rickshaw at, at night. Uh, luckily, the driver was not in the auto rickshaw, but then he was, in a, he was waiting in a shop while the auto rickshaw was, was parked somewhere. And when uh, Jitin's driver just drove, uh, tried to drive across, uh, drive past the auto rickshaw that he had just mowed down, the driver came in search of Jitin's driver. But uh, Jitin's driver um, manages to actually 
you know, drive past, drive on uh, with uh, the auto, auto rickshaw driver holding on to the window. So when the auto rickshaw driver does not, does not uh, get, uh, leave, get, I mean, um, let go of the car, uh, the driver actually, uh, you, know, em, you know, embraces his neck uh, with his arm and, uh, you know, and, and tries to uh, strangle him. Right. And so there's this, this incident of class, uh, ra uh, class arrogance uh, and uh, so that again becomes a suggestion of Jitain's violent uh, character, something which he seems to share with his father, somebody who is extremely violent and arrogant. Ba also clearly does not seem to like Alka because she thinks that Alka is uh, a promiscuous woman, a woman who is an alcoholic and uh, Alka doesn't have a child also with Nitin. And uh, Ba thinks that Alka is devious like her mother, right? So we, there's another suggestion that there's something uh, different about Alka and Dolly's family. Uh, we discover later that Alka and Dolly's mother was uh, a singer and dancer, right? So this is of course during just post uh, independence when it was still when uh, you know the, the the very idea of a woman uh, singing and performing and dancing was was shunned and stigmatized. And so Ba does not approve of uh, Alka and Dolly's uh, mother, who was someone who uh, performed, was a performing singer. Uh, Jitain also tries to conceal the fact that Praful gave them money and she, he lies to Dolly saying that Praful actually owes them money. And um, then Jitain also makes uh, Sridhar, um, uh, he, Jitain of course lies to Sridhar later on saying that he and Nitin uh, pick up uh, sexual escorts in their office. And so he then later on forces Sridhar to pick up a sex worker for him and bring her to the office. So we, 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 we discover from these uh, different uh, moments in the play that not everything is fine. That the family is also under, uh, is on the verge of collapsing. The marriages are, are on the verge of collapsing. And that uh, nobody seems to be quite happy in the marriage. Right? So Jitain also seems to be somebody who is uh, having uh, sexual affairs, uh, you know, with complete imp immune impunity and doesn't care about what his wife thinks and also forces his uh, authority on Sridhar and makes him uh, bring him a, a sex worker who will uh, give him pleasure. Uh, we also then later on discover towards the end of Act 2 that the house, the ancestral home that Jitain wanted to sell off to redeem his debts and to get the Revati account has been willed to Daksha. Right? So Daksha is the only heir of the family and she is Dolly and uh, Jitain's daughter. Right. So we, uh, we, uh, Nitin uh, tells Jitin that he learnt from Ba that she had willed the ancestral home to Daksha. And now Jitin is helpless, he does not know what to do about it. And he wants Nitin to actually leave Alka, right? because she, he is, she's, uh, she's an alcoholic and she is uh, probably having affairs with other men. So Jitin thinks that if Nitin divorces Alka, uh, he will again win uh, Ba's approval. Right? Because Nitin was always Ba's favourite son. He is the one who is uh, described as, as someone who is gentle, who is fair-skinned. Um, the husband, uh, so ba, ba is fair and like, like Nitin. Nitin has taken on uh, her Ba's looks, complexion, a gentle person, um, unlike Jitain who is like his father, who is, you know, dark complexion, who is violent, who is uh, authoritarian. And so uh, Jitain assumes that if Nitin leaves Alka, uh, he will again win Ba's favour because Ba does not like Alka. Right? So uh, that's what he uh, compels uh, Nitin to do. He, force, he, he, he orders Nitin to uh, abandon or to divorce Alka right? so that he can, they can get the property back from Ba. And in Act 3 again you have uh, the revelation of some more secrets where under the effect of alcohol, so the two sisters are having uh, sharing a drink with uh, Lalita who doesn't drink very much and under the effect of alcohol many other illicit secrets and desires emerge. So uh, the women of course uh, this becomes an opportunity for them to actually imagine uh, the possibility of playing uh, a transgressive role. So this uh, allusion to uh, Subhadra Kumari Chauhan's uh, poem on Jhansi Kirani comes here where Jhansi Kirani again becomes uh, you know a symbol uh, uh, you know a fantasy of um, uh, of female freedom from uh, social strictures, uh, oppressive norms of family. Uh, so Alka imagines herself as being uh, Jhansi Kirani. Dolly wants to be a Tawaif, uh, Tawaif like probably their mother was. 
uh, someone who can sing. In fact, they, they keep playing the songs of uh, these uh, Tumris by uh, these uh, by Nena, Nena Devi, and that itself becomes a symbol of uh, of uh, a transgressive sim uh, symbol of female of the female voice of the female singing voice that sings. So this, this whole idea of singing and performing, in some sense, is a, is, a, is an act of exposing, uh, visibilizing oneself uh, in in within uh, before the patriarchal gaze. And then Alka suddenly begins to start dancing in abandon uh, in the rains, right? And so there's a brief sense of freedom that she seems to have as she danced in the rains with her clothes getting drenched. So Daksha, later on we discover, is, uh, you know, um, uh, the heir of the, of the ancestral home. And we also learn that she is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, she is a child, uh, uh, she's a disabled child. And so she, and so we, we discover that, um, uh, she was not born disabled, right? Uh, and uh, uh, we also discover that uh, Praful has been made the trustee of the house, right? So uh, Ba seems to constantly ask for Praful, uh, despite the fact that she's losing her memory. She remembers Praful, and uh, we l now know why she want she always wanted Praful because she thought that Jitin would never be a kind and giving father, considering he was violent like his father. Uh, ba believed that Praful was the only person who would love and take care of Daksha. So he makes Praful, she makes Praful the trustee of the house and not uh, Jitin or Nitin. And Nitin, of course, also because he got married to Alka, uh, whom she does not approve of, that she realized that Praful was the only person who could actually be the trustee of the house. And uh, we later discover from uh, uh, Ba's cousin, who uh, tells, he tells her that uh, Alka and Dolly's mother was their father's uh, second wife, uh, if not wife, at least mistress or keep, right? So we discover that the mother was a singer who was not probably legally wedded uh, to uh, their father who was already married. And so there is that uh, stigma of uh, belonging to a family or a lineage of uh, female singers, right? And, uh, and uh, you know, an illegitimate uh, marriage, right? So, so uh, the bar seems to not, not approve of that, that Dolly and Alka's mother was a singer who was not legally wedded to their father. Uh, we discover that uh, Jitu had, uh, you know, in one of his violent rages, had actually beaten Dolly up when she was pregnant, uh, shortly after their marriage. And, uh, um, and it's because of that incident that she ends up giving birth to a premature and disabled daughter. Right? And so uh, that uh, the so you know, the, so J Jitu is terribly uh, feels terribly remorseful and guilty for having uh, produced her, uh, you know, uh, for having threatened his daughter's life. Right? And so he, uh, a lot of the love and affection that goes towards the Daksha by Jitu is uh, sheer out of sheer guilt and remorse. We also discover that Nitin was having an affair with Praful. So there is another secret which is revealed that Nitin was married to Alka for sheer convenience so that he could actually further his relationship with Praful. And so uh, we realized that there was uh, an, uh, an illicit um, uh, affair between Praful and Nitin and that uh, um, Praful had married uh, Nitin, uh, tricked him or forced him to marry uh, Alka only for the convenience sake. And that probably now Alka realizes that, uh, knows of the affair, which is why she, she, uh, she longs to be out of the, out of the marriage. That she, she feels that she's trapped in a completely loveless marriage. Kanaya also we discover was a made up fantasy by Dolly, who uh, seems to have been utterly uh, trapped in a, in a loveless and violent marriage. And she also uh, finally walks out on her husband uh, towards the end of the play. And uh, the auto rickshaw driver who uh, we also discover, we saw we, there's a scene where the auto rickshaw driver, uh, Lalita, discovers the auto rickshaw driver uh, climbing the wall of the house at night and uh, walking towards the uh, seas and going towards the outhouse, uh, towards the back of the house. And uh, we, uh, we, it's, there's a suggestion that probably the Nitin was having an affair also with the auto rickshaw driver. We see that the play, in some sense, slowly, gradually unravels secrets that uh, expose the hypocrisy of um, uh, familial intimacies. That uh, you know, the family, which is supposed to be the most, uh, you know, the institution, the space, the emotional affective space where the the most the most intimate relationships are possible, that becomes, in fact, ironically, the very state, uh, the very site of estrangement and alienation and violence.
and we see how this, uh, this, this occurs to across the two intersecting narratives between Bao on the one hand who was trapped in a violent marriage who had to resort to her father for to get money for her children and uh, you know Jitin who like his father has a rather violent relationship with uh, his wife and also is responsible for uh, producing a disabled daughter and um, uh, the uh, and Praful who you know threatens uh, uh, Alka uh, threatens to burn her hair if she does not actually uh, conform to being a good wife while he conveniently has an affair with her own husband right. so you see the hypocrisy and the uh, irony of uh, of patriarchy. So this is exactly where the uh, play uh, Bravely Fought the Queen ends. So this is our discussion of Bravely Fought the Queen. We will now return with a discussion of another play uh, by Maya Shatani, the last play which we will be discussing, which will, which will again deal with a similar uh, issue that has to do with uh, gender, uh, gender, the social regulation of gender and sexuality, which is called uh, Dance Like a Man. Thank you.